Hi guy, welcome to the Amiga Rama podcast. I'm your host Lefarius, and for this week we are going to be taking a deep look at Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe. But as always, before we jump into that, let's have a look at this week's news. First up, this was something I noticed just doing the rounds on the general internet feeds. Basically, Aerock, who does a huge, huge amount of CD32 conversions and compilations of CD games onto floppy disk games, even uh, onto to single CDs to run on your CD32 system has just converted Mist. Now this quite surprised me because it's not the usual sort of thing but looking at the description it needs a fast RAM to run and it even has an NVRAM saving so be able to save your game pretty much wherever you want. I think the actual CD32 has a really ridiculous low level amount of memory to save things onto. I think it's like kilobytes. You can maybe get two or three full saves on a system before it uh, all falls over. I've no idea if Eroch even listens to these shows, but if you are listening, a big thank you because the amount of games I've seen and I've actually played myself from time to time, especially over the last few years, is fantastic. I hope you keep up doing all this hard work because it is appreciated. I'm always on the lookout for interesting Amiga news and little tidbits and sites and things that keep me going and just one thing caught my eye over on YouTube recently is there's someone called Banjo Guy Ollie and he seems to be quite famous he does lots and lots of as you can probably tell banjo soundtrack covers but he also does a little bit of extra music and different instruments tied in at the same time and I just recently realized that he covered uh, the wall for Turrican 2 he's also done things like the Monkey Island games and what he tends to do is very very interesting because he will record himself playing either a different instrument or almost like it's an ensemble and then he edits it all together and it's almost like a concert and you get to watch him himself playing as part of a, a band of well Ollie's <laughs> it sounds very very strange when it's all put together and the way the music flows and it just works absolutely brilliantly and I really have been impressed I mean go and watch it I'll stick a link into the show notes after you've watched Turrican 2 by all means go and see the Monkey Island ones because those are some of my favorite versions of those tunes and lastly, a little bit of news that popped up, Trap Runner. Now, this is a game I saw over on IndieRetroNews.com. They are a huge news site which provide all sorts of retro goodness. But basically, Trap Runner features five worlds with different graphics and four stages in each, always completed by a bonus level. So, there are 24, five, sorry, 25 levels, followed by a special boss fight in level 26. Additionally, there are a few extra levels you can warp to like jetpack flying levels as for the difficulty of this game it's more fair than works sqr xe i've never heard of that before but you still have to be on your guard to evade all the deadly obstacles in the game it's basically a run and jump platformer looks very similar to uh, marvin's marvelous adventure i think it is with the odd touch of mario in there and kid chameleon in a way to the sort of graphics a very very interesting mix there's a video up and a download and stuff and i will stick that into the show notes as usual by all means go and download and let me know what you actually think Not a week goes by where there doesn't seem to be some type of new Amiga news. I mean, I'm surprised I can even do this section beyond a couple of episodes. It keeps on rolling and coming out and I'll keep talking about it. If you're enjoying the show, as always, you can pop along to patreon.com slash Amigarama. Now, I will add that I have started offering next week's episode early. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to keep it hidden for a huge amount of time i will still keep new episodes coming out every single week but if you want it seven days early just pop along to the patreon and drop onto the uh, four dollar tier it might sound strange but this sort of thing does help keep the show running We'll be right back. 
Let's move over to this week's game, Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe. Now I do have a fair bit of history with this game. In particular, I do remember having, it was only ever on a single floppy disk and I did have the copied edition. I can remember it still to this day quite clearly because me and a few friends used to bet like crazy and actual gamble on uh, matches and things as kids. It's a bit of a crazy thing to do and it was only like 10 or 20 pence bet. Because you could save the game and transfer stuff back and forth, you know, swap it quite easily. It was very easy to start some sort of like management league and then watch the team going through it and then do bets off the back. I mean, I was only about 12 or 13 at the time. What can I say? We were not quite right as kids. We were all into gambling. It was published by Image Works, who were responsible for games like Blood Witch, which I think is an RPG, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I think that was the same as the NES platform or action platform, I'm not sure what to call it, Predator 2, Megalomania, that's a sensible software game, Back to the Futures 2 and 3, loads and loads of like movie licenses, but a, a lot of mix of some very, very good games, especially from uh, other, what do you call them, like publishers like Konami and stuff like that. I'm not sure why they were so focused image works on this sort of title, but they're a massive company, what can I say? The developer behind the game was the Bitmap Brothers, a classic developer straight away. We have covered them in the past, uh, in particular on our oh Chaos Engine episode, which I think was our 30th. Anyway, they did games like Cadaver, both Chaos Engine's game, and I think that did that include an AGA version as well. I can't remember. I might be thinking the CD32 game. Gods, Zenon, I think that had uh, two Zenons. Yeah, because it was Zenon 2 Mega Blast, wasn't there? Mad Magic Pockets uh, and Speedball 1. There's not too many Bitmap Brothers games there, but uh, like I said, that's quite a good list to, to tackle. It came out in 1990. That's way before I was playing it as a kid. So also came out on the CD32 in 1995, which had AGA improvements. I didn't actually know that. I've never even seen it on the CD32. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go and have a look at that later. I suspect I did have a brief glimpse of it when I was just making notes of it and it did look a lot better graphics wise so I'm sure they must have done something to improve upon it I'm really sorry guys I should have tackled that one in a bit more in depth two-player game and was priced at £24.99 but of course five years later on the CD32 it was re-released for just £15 as a budget game so at least they didn't stick it out as like a £25-£30 full price games all those years like even with the uh, the updated bits and bobs there were a few coders. The first was Mike Montgomery, who did all the Chaos Engines games. Gods, Zenon, I think that's just the first game. Richard Joseph, who did Adventures of Robin Hood, which is a sort, I think it's a prequel to uh, Rome AD 92. That's a very old episode that we did. Cadaver, uh, Cannon Fodder, uh, all the Chaos Engine games. Robocod, that's the James Pond one. Awesome title. Very much a Christmas game, and I think that's coming out this Christmas on 
on the show. I can't promise anything just yet. <laughs> Rise of the Robots. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty much the end of his career right there. Next up was Robert Trevelyan, who only worked on, beyond this, Chaos Engine 2. I suspect, oh, that must have just been a side job. I don't think that's meant to be a very good game. The graphics were done by Dan Malone, who worked on Cadaver, Chaos Engines 1 and 2, but it didn't mention the AGA version, so I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, the music was done by the pretty famous Richard Joseph. He pretty much worked on all the uh, Bitmap Brothers games, loads and loads of their titles, but sadly passed away in 2007. He's, he was quite prolific in the Amiga scene at the time. His music was a lo across loads and loads of games. Also, a group called Nation 12, who also did the music on Gods. Now, I'm not sure they... Those are just the two Bitmap Brothers games. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. They seem to be like an external music group or not like a company. I mean, maybe they came from the demo scene. I couldn't really find much about them from the interviews and bits of blurb that I could find. Now, the original Speedball game was actually inspired by uh, Rollerball the movie, which is a very, very odd film. I did try and watch a trailer for it. I always try and come to these episodes prepared, and it was very, very bizarre. It was like combat on skates using, like, massive weapons. You know, like, even the movie poster shows this off with, like, big spike gloves, and it's very, very action orientated and very violent, I believe. I'm probably going to have to watch that, actually. It was quite an entertaining trailer. It's probably one of them classic films. Anyway, they base the entire first game behind it and of course this is the sequel so it's just riffing off the the same sort of theme pretty much now speedball 2 compared to the first has double the pitch size it also has multiple sorry multi-scrolling and what i mean by that is on the first game you would only go up and down but on this it will go up down left and right you don't see all of the pitch at once you can move around it in sections and it follows you around quite closely with the camera the first game just was not it just wasn't possible to do this at the time they didn't have the tech or the know-how so the sequel came along and they just went for bigger and better and made as many improvements as possible originally the game was developed on the atari st and they were just going to port it over to the amiga but as work continued on it and dan malone got more and more involved i'll get to him in a bit the entire game plan for this changed when they just realized how much more the amiga could do compared to the st people are always compared the two one thing i believe the st can't really do is like scrolling properly it's not a great system for it and it's not as well developed as the amigos i've probably got some st fans now that try to throw objects at me and things through windows and stuff the amigo is better i'm afraid to say guys and this showed with the development and certainly showed with speedball too Dan Malone pretty much ran with this project and tried to make it his own as much as possible and bear in mind he was working off pre-made idea and actually as he was getting more and more involved and taking more time to develop this beyond the look of the ST version he was actually approached by Peter Molyneux they were getting very suspicious of him almost as if he was doing something he shouldn't be and he was actually asked by Peter what's your angle because he kept altering like the Amiga's uh, design and holding up development and stretching it out for months and months when you compare the two versions side by side it's only simple things the amiga has a lot more detailed designs and the graphics are a, a lot more shady they have more to them and one of the things which didn't make it onto the st version were things like stars on the pitch it's not because it wasn't capable of doing this it's just the development team for it really wasn't as into this as Dan Malone and he was really pushing it hard to take this further and further he greatly improved things like ball launchers as I said the shading uh, lighting in particular this pitch really is glorious with the amount of fancy effects and uh, shading and the way it all works together and it looks you know it's got that great futuristic look and the overall design of it is, is really it's not dark and gritty, but it's got that gritty, metallic, almost chaos punky. <laughs> I'm going off on one, aren't I? But he just did a brilliant job with it. And it's why you can see such a difference between the two versions. Now, Brutal Deluxe, which is the subtitle and also the name of the main team that you play, it's actually a reference to a song by Nitro Deluxe, that's a lot of deluxes, called This Brutal House. There's another team in there as well called Revolver, which was named after Dan Malone's Scooter Club. Uh, he was all over this game, wasn't he? 
It was hugely successful on launch and one thing which really stood out to me when I was reading back through the notes and doing a bit of research is it kept appearing in Amiga Power's Best Game of All Time awards and it did this from 1991 to 94 so that should give you an idea of the sort of success this game was having and just the good opinion and feeling towards it that people had it never went lower than fourth place it was third was its highest but the fact it was there for like three maybe four years it was a very very long time it was ported to the acorn archimedes the atari falcon and st which again was supposed to be the original versions commodore c64 and the c64 yes game boy game boy advance that must have been a much later version there was a port sega master system i have played that actually that's a very very good game it's quite unexpected if you think about it, that's an 8-bit console and this is a 16-bit game being ported back and it really works well mega drive or genesis you call it in the us and even the pocket pc now that's not something i'm familiar with but it did stand out as a sort of oddity i mean originally there's like there's a portable version of it that was out years upon years ago now there was an iPad or iOS version released in 2011 called Speedball 2 Evolution that had updated graphics, it kept most of the look, it's certainly not as fast from what I could see of it, I did try to uh, download a copy but I've got an older iPad anyway so I wasn't really uh, going out of my way to find a copy but it played alright, it's not fantastic, seemed to review okay at the time but to be honest I don't think it was was a great release and you would expect something for a classic game like this now in 2013 there was a game released on steam which was another version called speedball 2 hd now it looks different and it really really does look different to the original it's the, it's the same idea but you've got things like lots and lots of different pitches crowds are interactive there's a lot more going around the pitch and underneath because in some cases you've got like transparent pitch which I think must be a huge distraction. From what I could see from the reviews, the, the gameplay just isn't there. It was pretty much dumped on. No one thought it was a good version and, you know, they just expected better. Now, I would have hoped something like that is maybe they'd have put in like a, an emulated version of the Amiga or the PC one to go back to. But from what I could see of all the notes and things and reviews, they didn't do that. So straight away it gets a down mark in my book. Of course, with this being a sports title, even a very violent and brutal one, ho -ho, it doesn't really have any sort of story. It sets a bit of a scene saying that the original Speedball tournament and everything has been destroyed, that the new one for Speedball 2 has been completely rebuilt from the ground up and it's all double the size and it's super large and big and actiony. That's pretty much it. There's no real big story in the manual, which is a bit disappointing. There is a sort of intro when you first start the game off and it refers to the like 2100s in the far distance and how the planets all you know involved in this big tournament but sadly there's not much of a story there and you look at something like brutal sports football i think which is a much later version of this game effectively because it is inspired hugely by it that does a lot more with its story it has a bit more humor to it and a bit it's a bit more jokey and it's sad that they've not done anything like that for this now when you first start the game it's a simple set of menu choices there's not much to it from the beginning but when you go into it and you start off and you get dumped on the pitch you're presented with a top-down view of the action which covers about a fifth of the pitch maybe a bit less at any single time the camera does follow you up down left and right again i said before the original game only went up and down so it's a, a huge improvement and the pitch is much much bigger now it does follow that whole chaos engine style and design you've got very big chunky metallic characters and they're really strong and muscly and they, they look like rugby players with masses and masses of spiked armor on it's probably the best way of, of putting it you're presented along the bottom of the screen it's quite simplistic you've got a bar with time left in the current I don't know what you call it, period, <laughs> I'm not sure, time section, or is it quarter, I'm not sure, it doesn't actually say, points, parts, energy bar, 
It's nice and simplistic and it gets the job done. The rest of it is the full view of the pitch as you're moving around and that works really well because you don't want to be drawn by all these lots of stats and figures and like you play something like Madden and you've got like big bars along the top of the screen. No, this is straight into the sport and into the action. Now the player themselves, of course it's just using a single button. Doesn't matter if you've got a multi button one. Again, I've not played the CD32 version which came out later. Maybe they added more buttons I don't think you need them. So it's a single button. You can run in all directions. Pressing fire either tackles or punching depending on your distance to where the ball is currently or other players. Holding down fire will throw the ball but from everything I've played and what I can see is you've not got any sort of control over the distance. So it's not like say sensible soccer where if you hold the button down longer you'll get more and more power till you release it sort of thing. There's no finesse to it. You just throw it at every single time at a set difference the strategy part comes into it is you have to get the ball you're constantly tackling people and running up to them and charging them out of the way there's no referee in the game whatsoever you can pretty much be as brutal and violent as you wish but oddly there is no blood on any of the pitches you're bashing all these players around and they really make some big chunks when they crunches when they fall on the floor but there's no like pools of blood or anything like that it's certainly not like a brutal sport football several years later you only ever control one character at a time you can't choose the character as you're moving around because it's all automatic but usually it's the closest to the ball and once you've got control of a player and you're moving it you don't tend to lose it unless the ball flies off into the far distance but the characters do feel like they have a lot of weight behind them they don't move too slowly they've got a fair bit of speed behind it but there's a lot of like rugby weight there it feels like when you're tackling someone you're really leaning into it and it takes a lot of effort and the thing is as you carry on in the game you can upgrade the players over in the gym we'll get into that in a bit later but the fact is as you upgrade them and make them more powerful and faster and mess around with their stats and stuff you do actually feel that within the game they do get better and better the further you get within it and it, you know it's a nice touch when you go to the gym in between matches, this which is where all the training happens, you can focus on things like uh, strength, speed, tackling, intelligence, throwing the ball. I mean, everything can be updated. There's a fair big chunk of different skills that you can mess around with. If you want to, you can affect the individual players. You earn coins during the play to do these upgrades or you can just do a nice simple choice and upgrade everybody at the same level all at once until you run out of money now of course that means you can be as finicky as you want and just have a few star players maybe you have them at the front or have a star defender and focus around that or you might just want to go all in and go for the craziest layer and just match everybody up to the same level you know either way it has its ups, it has its down, but I personally tend to go with updating everybody at once because it just seems to match the other teams better when you're playing against them. And I know Brutal Sports Football use this idea, same idea as well, actually, to some degree, much, much further down the line. The whole point of the game really is building up the team that you're in control of. Now you can save the game, it's not just limited to a single play, you know, go for a league, you're out, you're done, that's it. No, you can save it to a floppy disk, take it away, come back later. And the great thing about that is you can upgrade this game or this team rather over several seasons and get them really built up and get into the top end the great thing about this you've got choice between a knockout set of matches which is nice and simple you play to the top of like a mini league if you lose you get knocked out if you win you get more and more money and maybe you win at the top you get a big prize a simple cup nothing too fantastic there a league option that's nice and simple there's uh, just a couple of divisions in there you start off at the bottom of two you just work your way up and then get to the head of the first eventually again it's all about building your team up there is a practice mode thrown in I mean pretty much as you'll get with any sports game really that just gives you a single match to play you can choose another team nice and simple again it also lets you have two players which is a nice turnabout because you know you're playing against another person
Now, when you are running around on the pitch, I was talking earlier about Dan Malone's designs and the extra things that he drew on there. There are lots and lots of interactive objects that you can mess around with. There's things like bounce stones, where if you throw the ball to at them, it will bounce off in a completely random direction. You can't really plan an attack around that because it doesn't, just because you say hit it at say, the bottom left doesn't mean it'll always say spring off to the top right. It does bounce off in a randomest direction, which sometimes can work in your favour if you've got a mass of people coming towards you get the ball out of trouble but a lot of the times you can have it bouncing back into your own section so you've got to be careful things like stars along the side of the wall and basically there's like five lined up and if you throw the ball and um, it lights up if you get enough of them light up you get it'll take a multiplier lots and lots of points uh, sorry lots of gold uh, with a bonus at the end there's also like a, a score multiplier which as you fill it up on it's either the left or the right hand side depending on which way you're going up and down the pitch it will basically increase increases your score the more times you get it slung through this nice and simple really there are also a big pile of items to pick up on the floor stuff like uh, slow the enemy team reverse their controls that works great in a two-player game because it can be very annoying when you're into a match and all of a sudden you know pressing forward goes the opposite direction left becomes right and vice versa which is great but the computer doesn't really suffer from that and I know it makes a nice enough effort to show it's a bit confused it's not really going to get too stuck on that for very long so it becomes a bit of an odd item to use a freeze team that does what it says on the tin really you get several seconds where you can run around do things like crazy maybe grab the ball grab ball nice and easy you pick that up the ball appears in your hands goal door that's a nice big metallic door behind the goalkeeper now i haven't said before there is a goalkeeper obviously because it's a goal <laughs> right in front of the net there and your player is he, he only moves at the speed that you've got him set to really a lot of the time it's a nice big open net pretty much it's not really a net that's, that's the wrong way of putting it. I'm sticking too much to the football there but you've got a single goalkeeper in front it can be a mad dash sometimes and the fact that you get this bonus and his big door drops down and it's a bit like uh, you know in the pinball games when you get one at the bottom and the ball won't roll through the hole so it's a, a very nice touch and a simple thing like a shield I mean there's lots and lots of different things stuff that affects like a single player you can pick up stuff for armor and eyesight intelligence whilst you're running around again you've got to be careful and you've got to be fast to get these because the other team can collect them too that's the other side to this just because you can get improvements doesn't mean they can't as well so they could be up in their team as you're playing so it really does become a mad dash to get some of the good items and the good upgrades sometimes now luckily when you play this the controls are fantastic it's really really responsive it's fast paced the joystick responds really well you move in a direction you're off and you're running straight away there's no walking it's constant running everywhere the game is so fast paced that you become used to this very very quickly and the great thing about it even though it's so fast you always feel like you're in control the the single button it works great with this you tap the button you run off in a direction you're constantly chasing the ball you try to keep up with the other players you can run circles around the other players and really get as deeply involved as you want to it controls great the game as a whole does have a rather steep learning curve i mean i certainly struggled when i first started playing it does take a while to get into it but luckily you can upgrade your team as you play and you will need that because like two or three matches in you really will struggle if you've not been learning to play it properly or focus but luckily there is that practice mode there so even if you're grumbling a bit you can always go back to that for a bit get a bit more use of the control and how your team works together there's no sort of like tactics to do with like say a 4-4-2 or something from football and all these clever movements around the pitches it's a big mad dash to get the ball everybody goes for it they're all running around now the ai for this is really really good it seems quite clever and they're not just like stuck in a corner or doing simple patterns they all seem to be very very fast very reactive and they respond to you well if you do something crazy they can often come back for it and it can become very very brutal and reading a few reviews the team behind it were very proud of what they achieved with the ai because it wasn't something that had been done in great depth like this before so it's quite impressive for for a sports game you will have heard it earlier but there is a thumping techno beat between scenes and also when you first open the game up it's a really awesome tune it sounds futuristic and it's got that real mid 90s almost techno garage sound i don't know what i'm talking about but it sounds great and i put it in full into the into the podcast earlier 
sadly there's not much more than this there's only the one song and even looking through the original mod files there's nothing beyond the main theme and even though it's several minutes long it's not really used to any great deal and it's sad that they didn't stretch it out a bit more and maybe do some you know more music to mix it up a bit now there are amazing sounds effects I mean lots of bangs and clangs and metallic noises one of the greatest things about this game is and I think it compares to the first one as well is there's lots and lots of voices and these aren't like muffled or anything they sound really really clear and they're just sh shouting out simple things about what's happening on the pitch and like you know if you'd make a miss or a score or something like that and it's a very futuristic Americanized sort of voice and it sounds great you've also got the constant cheering of crowds and they seem to be quite reactive to what's going on and it's nothing too complicated but it adds to the whole game it just makes it sound like you're actually there and it's not just a matter of oh there's a few noises as things bounce off no the whole pitch is alive there's a lot of sound effects going in there the crowd really does help build up that atmosphere as you're charging around like crazy and the fact that the voices are just so so clear I was surprised at how clear they were it does have a replay mode but it's nothing too fantastic you can't play around with it it just happens straight after a goal but there's no sort of like direct control to it you can't record things or do anything and make you know you can't control it bit sad really but yeah what can you say it does come with a management mode as well and that's not like a player manager it's literally you just watch all the matches going on but you get to mess with all the stats and compare things I did say before there is a gym and basically the gym is like huge chunky icons of everything like like strength is str intelligence is int you go over each one you've got a few bars at the top and you can affect what level they're at is the more money you sink into it the higher the bars get it's nothing more complicated than that the fact that you can then go in with this management mode mess around with it this and then go on to say like the transfer market the transfer market's not as complicated i don't think as it should be but there's a lot of star players in there and the thing is if you want to star player you will lose one of your own players it, because you have to give up a space it's not like there's loads of subs that you can abandon or give up on sadly i felt the management mode on this was a bit boring it's just not as fun to play as the main game yourself because it's so violent it's so over the top you want to be in there getting involved and doing the big action Basically, the more money you have, the more fun you will have with this mode. It does come down to watching the matches up close, and uh, you might be off a bit about that, but the fact that you can spend this cash on these players and this team and build it up and do a bit more with it, it just adds an interesting extra element. I doubt it'll be anything that people will be sinking a lot of time into. If you're just a bit tired of playing, you can relax, sit back and watch a match. And this is one of the things we used to bet on <laughs> as kids, because you could just sit there, set up a match, compare all the sides of things and then just set the teams off and just hope to god that you actually win of course we do need to tackle some of the game's problems now i did say before it's a one button control game that can feel a bit limiting at times the game itself is really really fast everything happens at such a crazy pace that you sort of get used to it and it all happens around you but i would have just liked to be able to do a bit more with the ball and i didn't really like the fact that you're very limited how you can throw it and tackle and things it's dirty it's gritty you jump straight in there you, you react and respond on the spot and that's all there is to it there's there's no sort of depth to the controls you're not planning like super long throws or passing systems or anything like that because there's so much action there that you're just relying on this single one button and i just would have liked a bit more depth to it now you can only play as one team in the single player mode it would just have been nice to have a choice really you do play against lots of other teams and i would have loved to just been able to choose one of them and play them through the different divisions visions or the leagues or the cups and stuff i mean i get it because it's called speedball 2 brutal deluxe that's the name of the main team but i'd like an option to play as something different again i don't know if the aga version much later on managed to fix this or if maybe they upgraded it it would have just been really nice because if you'd had that mod it would also give you the chance to use the management version with lots of different teams the management options are a very nice touch you know you can do an awful lot to like individual players and even the team as a whole 
overall it still feels very very light it's like an added extra you're not really going to sink a lot of time into doing anything major with that but they could have just it reminds me of a uh, sensible world of soccer in a way it's just i wanted that bit more depth to do with the games and things again maybe simple things like upgrading stadiums or maybe team locks and developing things in another way and it's just very very basic it's a few menus you're upgrading a few bars and it doesn't go any further there's a fair few modes to play across the games with like the knockout and the cup and stuff it feels a bit disjointed i would have liked a, a better way to advance the team say between these modes maybe linking it as one the fact that you can't really do anything directly on upgrading your actual team and it just feels a bit off it's like they're missing the things that links it all together nothing major but it's just a, a bit of a shame and just for a bit more menu editing or changing a few things here and there could have made it even better now some of the teams you face off against are really really tough you know it forces you to plan like all of the upgrades in the gym but then if you want a star player you will lose the player that you're having to transfer out to replace them with which i get why they've done it but i would have liked an opportunity say to put them to one side or remix them in later because once they're gone they're gone you can't be like rebuying them back you know they've no opportunity to, uh, to keep them and again that's a shame these aren't really like major niggles or anything i just feel there are a few issues they could have ironed out quite easily and just developed part of it into being into a much much better game don't get me wrong this is a pretty good game but it's just on the close to perfection there and a few little tweaks could have just done wonders the magazines at the time were raving about this is probably the best thing i can say cvg gave it 97 percent cu amiga 95 percent amiga format 94 the one 94 as well amiga power you're usually quite mean to games they gave it 92 percent and the lowest of the lot was amiga action at 87 this is a proper smash hit all the magazines loved it they were raving about it it was in all of their like for sales charts for years and years to come so this was a real popular game at the time and so it should be it really is gritty futuristic it's got awesome music even if it's only like very brief great looking graphics i've never really seen this in a sports game and the depth that you see from when you're looking down above they're quite close and you can make all the players out brilliantly and it just works on that awesome futuristic level and they look like proper like american football like souped up sort of players and the fact that you have got a management rope mode and even though it does have its issues all of this is on one floor disc and that's the most mind-blowing part about it and you've got this one there's so much content on there and so many things to do and it's only on one floppy disc now this is a real joystick destroyer and what i meant mean by it is it can be frustrating at parts and you really feel like if you keep pushing forward on the joystick you'll just go that little bit faster than you've player will get out in front and a lot of the time you're just driving the stick forward and going like crazy and banging away at the buttons even just playing it for on and off just before i started like looking at the game properly i was abusing the joystick i really was bashing away at it and it really did take some effort to stop playing like that because it's so much fun it really does draw you in it makes you want to push further and further the controls are the greatest thing about it it just feel spot on it does have its issues in the sense that it's not as in-depth with only that one button control and i would have liked to do extra things for what it gives you what it presents you with and the way it plays the controls are great and i love the way that you could just move around the pitch at speed and it's really satisfying the further and further you get into the game and the way it powers up your player with the upgrades and stuff you do feel a difference and you feel a difference against the other team which is the most important thing thing about it it's a real shame that there isn't more to do with that management mode that i've said multiple times maybe even some more modes linked to that or just expanded a bit more even if they'd have done something like an expansion disc much later i'd have loved to have bought that and picked it up because it would have just expanded the game and you just want more of this it's brilliant you know there's an awful lot on it and i still can't believe i keep saying it, but this is one floppy disc no wonder i was so hooked on this as a disc because it's the sort of thing you can just tuck in your pocket and take to school and carry around the trade with people that's all that's piracy itself isn't it but it gives you that opportunity it's real there's so much content here on just a single disc 
I can really see why Brutal Sports pinch so much from this game because it gets so much right it's just spot on i mean as you can probably tell this is an amiga armor highly recommended game by all means if you've never played a speedball game before don't really bother with the first one it's good but it's not on this level of fun go and play the sequel now it's absolutely awesome you don't need any experience of anything else or of the previous game just jump straight in there you'll you'll have a blast and that seems as good a time as any to end the episode. If you would like to join the Amiga Armour Deluxe sports team, oh my god, uh, you can come along and join us on patreon.com slash Amiga Armour. And I would just like to put out a huge thank you as usual to all of our ongoing Patreon supporters. They are Adam Bradley, Figgy slash CTZ, Graham Vebke, Jason Warns, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Retro Ravi, Sneff and Treble. If you've anything you'd like to say about this show or any suggestions or even if you'd like to have a moan about what I've just been saying, you can pop along to lafarius at amigarama.com. Uh, yes, you can send me an email there or go to the website on amigarama.com or even the Facebook page, facebook.com slash amigarama. Until next time.